On this channel, I play around with a lot of hardware and often test out how various devices might function as a media server, storage server, router, etc. But it occurred to me that while I have talked a little bit about some of the things I run in my own home lab, I've never really covered everything. So today I thought it would be fun to talk about the hardware as well as all of the software that I'm running on it. Now, fair warning, some of this does get a bit messy, especially on the software side, but at least for me just running this here at my house, everything works just fine. That would be a different story though if I were trying to run a business because, well, messy, clunky software is the last thing you need. Fortunately, there's the sponsor of today's video, Odoo. Now at this point, there's a good chance you've heard me talk about Odoo in some previous videos, but it's an open source software suite for businesses with over 45 different applications. Whether you need CRM, point of sale, project management, inventory management, or heck, even a website, Odoo has you covered. With its modular yet seamless design, you can start with just a few applications and then expand as your business needs grow. This makes it perfect for small businesses all the way up to large organizations. Because it's open source, you can self-host Odoo, or you can get the Enterprise Edition for some additional features and support at a great value. Plus, if you want to try or even use just a single application, you can do that for life for free. There's also a vast amount of documentation out there, as well as a large community of developers and users, so you'll never struggle to find information or advice. So if you're interested in trying out Odoo yourself, make sure and click the link down in the description below, where you can get a free 15-day trial with no credit card needed. All right, back to my home lab. I think it makes the most sense to check out the hardware first and then check out the software after that. So let's go take a look. All right, so apologies for the video and audio quality. I'm just on my phone because it's a lot easier to film in here. Well, on my phone. So this is my humble little home lab. It's in this closet here. And we'll actually start down here at the bottom. These are my two TrueNAS servers that I built in a recent video. This machine on the right is actually just a rehousing essentially of my previous TrueNAS server in this new case. And then this one on the left is a new server that I built in the Fractal Define XL. This will eventually be my main TrueNAS server, but currently it's just operating as a local backup of this one because I haven't taken the time to switch everything over and get it all working. But these both work. They're also both hooked up with IPMI, which we'll look at in a bit, so I can remotely access them. And they're both running off of a UPS down here, which I believe will run for about 45 minutes. But once this battery gets low, it should automatically kick both of these off. Now moving up here is the rack with most everything else. Uh, there's also another UPS here for this that's much smaller, but it doesn't need to be quite as big. Um, starting with the networking stuff, we have my router here, essentially, which is running Proxmox with a virtualized um, instance of PFSense as well as some other things. So I have this port up here, which is a two and a half gig port for Proxmox, and then the other three are for WAN, LAN, and then another port all for PFSense. And then that's hooked up to two different switches, uh, this QNAP here, which is for all of my 10 gig stuff. And then I have this old cheap TP-Link switch, which the PoE doesn't work. And then the fans I swapped out for some Noctua fans to make it not nearly as obnoxious. There's also a patch bay up top for all of the cable runs at my house. And then another switch at the very top that actually handles PoE for my cameras and access points. Right here on the front, I have the Axe Effect temperature sensor from Craft Computing, which I reprinted in a somewhat translucent case, which is pretty cool in my opinion. And this is just doing very basic temperature monitoring that gets sent to Home Assistant and Prometheus, which I'll, once again, I'll talk about here in a bit. Then over here, I have this little Geekom Mini uh, IT12. I think it's a 12th gen Intel chip that's running Proxmox. And this is basically where all of my containers and VMs and everything run. And then I have that hooked up with this tiny pilot KVM. So I have KVM access to this machine as well. Then over here, I have my older Synology NAS, which at this point is basically just used for running my security cameras. And then below that, there's this Mac Mini, which is still running a few services because I just haven't gotten around to finally moving them all over to other machines. But I eventually will get this out of this closet. The only other thing here is my pretty janky cooling solution, which I kind of covered in a previous video and then made some tweaks. I had an intake down at the bottom that I moved up to the top, but this just helps force some warm air out the top of the closet through this louvered door here. I do have some plans to potentially rework this whole setup now that I actually have a much bigger 3D printer with the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon that they were awesome enough to send over, which I'll definitely be using here in the future to print some cool cases and other fun stuff. So I'm excited for that. All right, so that wraps up all of the hardware. Let's move over to the software, starting with TrueNAS. 
Now, if I'm being honest, this is a little bit boring. I just have my main TrueNAS server here, which still has four unassigned disks because, like I said, I haven't migrated everything how I plan to. So this is the same setup I had before with just two mirrored VDEVs in a single pool. And then I have my backup NAS that has all eight drives in RAID Z2. Eventually this will become my main NAS and then this one will switch to being my backup. But for now, I've just been using the same surfer I've been using and using this as a backup until I finally have time to kind of switch everything over. There's really nothing interesting on here. I just have one application running for tail skill that way. I can sync everything from this NAS to an offsite backup at my parents' house, which there's also an update available, but I'll take care of that later. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it for TrueNAS. I just have the two systems running. I don't run any apps or VMs really on these other than that TrueScale instance. And then, like I said, I do have IPMI set up for both of these. So if I ever need to make configuration changes to the BIOS or reinstall software, I can do that without having to actually go pull it out and hook it up to a monitor and everything, which is really helpful. All right, moving on to my PFSense box, which is actually running Proxmox. It's running in an older version of Proxmox here, 7.3. I, I probably should upgrade it, but at the same time, it's been working, and I just don't want to deal with the hassle of potentially messing something up with my router. So it sort of just is what it is. But it's obviously running a VM here for PFSense, as well as an LXC container for WireGuard and Pi-hole. And I got a lot of criticism when I first set this up for virtualizing my router instead of just running it bare metal. And I do have a couple of reasons for why I still do that. First of all, it still works and I haven't had any issues, so there's no reason to change it. But second of all, if I ever decide to try out a different router OS, it's pretty easy to. Like if I wanted to try out OpenWRT or something, all I'd have to do is spin up another virtual machine and turn off this one and then pass through the hardware to the new one and I could just set it up pretty easily. And then if I don't like that, I can just spin up PFSense and I'm back to how I was before. So it is kind of nice to be able to try out some different things without having to reinstall an operating system and such. All right, now let's move on to that Geekom Mini IT12, which is also running Proxmox, and this is where I run the majority of my services and such. And like I said, I also have this hooked up to that tiny pilot KVM, so I can hop over here if I ever need bare metal access to adjust settings in the BIOS or whatever, so that's very handy. Now the first container I'm running here is Casa OS, and if we hop over there, you can see it's just plain old Casa OS, and here I run a few different containers, none of which are like that mission critical or anything. The first thing I'm running is this thing called N8N. I don't know if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but it's actually pretty cool. I've just started messing around with that for a little bit to help me with some automations for Notion. Now, I briefly talked about this before, and actually Notion sponsored a video one time, but I use Notion for all of my scripts and project management for videos and everything. So here I have this... Uh hardware haven hub in notion this is kind of uh, the landing page for all of my stuff so i can see the videos i'm working on and i can also get access to the scripts and i have some other stuff but if i make a new video there's some automation you can do um in notion and so it'll generate some of these tasks that i have pre-made that will um, create and just have the status set as not started but it's kind of limited in terms of what you can do with automation so n8n is pretty cool because i can just kind of make these workflows like for example I have this one here called create script and basically anytime i make one of these projects in notion it'll actually wait a few seconds for me to generate the new title and then it'll generate a new script and link it to that project in the database uh, Notion's a little bit weird if you haven't messed with it before. I can also change this from an idea status to an in-progress status. And then we have to wait a few minutes because this uh, only pulls like every minute or so. So it does take a little bit. All right, so it takes a few minutes because it's a little slow with the API and everything. But one of the first things it did was it actually created this script here that I can open. And then I can just click this to generate my normal script template that I have. And that'll actually link that script page to this project here under script. And then also because I changed this status to in progress, it automatically changes the status here of all of these tasks that are linked to this project to in progress, which is helpful because then if I go to a page like this one here, I have all of these tasks that are in progress and I can move stuff over to today and then move stuff to done. And it kind of helps me just keep track of what I'm working on and see what I can work on. So it's not anything crazy, but it does save me quite a bit of time and quite a bit of clicking. And I'm kind of interested in trying to see what all else I can do with it. So N8N is one of the first things I'm running. I'm also running Uptime Kuma, which is doing a lot. It's just monitoring uptime for a few of the machines in that closet. And then if there's ever a machine that goes down, I get an alert in Discord. I'm also running this MySpeed, which just does some speed tests every few hours, I think, right now. 
Uh, it's a little weird depending on which server it's going to. I'll get very bad results sometimes from this, but then get just fine results if I go to like fast.com or something. So uh, it is nice because every now and then I'll have an issue where uh, something happens, like maybe I need to restart my PFSense box or something, or my ISP starts having issues. So it is nice to have this running so that if there is an issue, I can sometimes catch it before I even notice it. And this once again also gets reported to Discord. NetData is running, but I'm not really using that for anything. I am running Crafty Controller, which is at this point really just running this one Skyblock server that I don't really have time to play much anymore. It's kind of just sad and I haven't hopped on in quite some time, but it is running that server as well as this like test server that's currently not running. There are a few other containers in Casa OS that are currently spun down, like for example, Mesh Commander. I, ha I have this in case I ever need to test out. I think it's uh, Intel's AMT. It's like their um, out of band management. So I can use this to uh, kind of like the same thing as IPMI with my TrueNAS boxes, but with Intel's like vPro AMT. I'm getting all the words wrong, but I can use this to uh, rem get remote access to those machines if they can. And then Viseron, this is for some testing. Uh, Sync thing was for some testing. So I have these here just in case I need to spin them back up, but nothing really that serious. So that's COS OS. I also have an LXC container for TailScale, which is really simply just running TailScale and it's set up as a subnet router and an exit node. So if I'm on my tailnet on my phone or somewhere else, if I ever want to use TailScale instead of WireGuard, I can. I also have an LXC container for Jellyfin, and you can see here I've passed through slash dev slash DRI render D128. That way I have hardware accelerated transcoding. I'm running Jellyfin. I don't have a ton on here because really I mostly just use this to watch The Office. I have a few other things from DVD rips I've done, but for the most part, I mostly just watch YouTube and my wife kind of just listens to audiobooks and podcasts. So we don't watch a ton of TV. I'd love to get my DVD and Blu-ray ripping set up, put back together in some form or another. But yeah, it's Jellyfin and it works and I mostly use it just to watch The Office. I also have another LXC container which is running Debian and Portainer for some other services. And if I hop over here, you can see I'm actually just running three stacks. So this first one is just Home Assistant and it's just running Home Assistant, but I like running it in a stack because it's nice and tidy. You guys have probably seen Home Assistant. I use it a lot for various things, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. But yeah, I'm running Home Assistant. I also have this stack for Image, which I'm just now kind of getting into and trying out. Um, currently, we had been using like Google Photos for backing up all of our photos, but it's kind of messy, uh, partially because me and my wife are on two different accounts. But regardless, I'm, I've been trying out Image just a little bit over actually just the last few days. And I plan to, now that I have a lot more storage on my NAS, I plan to move all of our photo backups and everything to this because it's worked pretty well so far. Even works really well with like videos and such. I also have this gluten-r stack. And, th and this is running a few services that end in R as well as Deluge, which I'm, I'm not going to get too deep into those just because of sometimes how YouTube can do strikes and stuff for community guidelines. So I'm not going to get into that. I really don't torrent much. Uh, this is more so just to kind of test things out and use it when I need to, but it's a really cool stack. I actually got the idea from Jim's Garage. Here's a video that I'll link. It's actually pretty cool. Within the stack, you can run all of your like R stack, like Prowler and such, as well as like Deluge for a client. And then you network all of those through this thing called Gluten, which you set up with a VPN, which I'm using private internet access for that. And then all of those containers automatically just get networked through that VPN connection. So it's pretty cool. It's a nice way if you're looking to have a torrent set up and you want to make sure that you're on a VPN and have it all nice and contained. Make sure to check out that video from Jim's Garage. I basically just copied that with a few tweaks. And that's everything that's running on Portainer. Next, we have Prometheus and Grafana, which... Uh, Prometheus itself is pretty boring. Um, like I can go here and type in something like CPU temperature and hit execute and I'll get this response from uh, actually my two TrueNAS boxes, but it's not very useful on its own, which is why people typically link this with a thing called Grafana, which I'll get to in a second. But Prometheus isn't actually the only th service that's running on this LXC container. You can actually see on that LXC container, I'm running two services that I set up, one for this graphite exporter dot service, and then one for SNMP exporter. And this graphite exporter is really cool. Uh, TrueNAS itself can't just directly export data to Prometheus. It uses graphite instead. So this is kind of a, a middleman. So TrueNAS will export its reporting to this graphite exporter, which is then scrapable by Prometheus. And then the same thing down here with SNMP exporter, which I talked about that a little bit in my Axe Effect video recently. 
that as well as a lot of other stuff exports as SNMP to this SNMP exporter. And then that can be scrapable by Prometheus. So both of those are running on this machine as well. And then, like I said, I'm running Grafana. So if I hop over here to this quick look dashboard I have, we can see a few things. So first of all, we can see this axe effect temperature status up here, which you can see it was pretty warm before I had the door open. And then now that the door is still open for me filming, it's cooled off quite a bit. And then I also have temperatures for like my Synology up here. I have CPU load and RAM for my Proxmox server. I have all of my drive temps for both TrueNAS boxes. And then I have some various volumes here to see you know, how much more capacity I have and various volumes across different servers. I'm still working on a lot of this. For example, I don't have like my PFSense box hooked up with Prometheus yet, which is something I'm kind of working on. Like I have this network closet dashboard where I can kind of see some more specifics about that axe effect temperature sensor but then i also have some other dashboards like this for my proxmox server so i can see a lot more details about that and then also my two TrueNAS scale boxes this is uh using that graphite exporter which i'll have this stuff linked down in the description if you're interested but here i can actually select which server i want which hard drive haven 2 is the new nas and then hard drive haven is the old one but here i can see the status of the pools i can also see memory usage cpu temperature um, ZFS stats like arc size, L2 arc size, and so on. And then I also have a dashboard specifically for my Synology NAS that gives me a lot of information, including the fact that I'm running an outdated version of DSM, but no worries. So it's not anything crazy, but it is nice to have this one place that I can go to and just browse through a few different dashboards and get a quick idea of how all of my servers are doing and make sure nothing's wrong. Now you might have also noticed that this Hard Drive Haven 2, the, the newer NAS, uh, wasn't on for a bit, uh, and that's actually because I currently, because I'm just using it as a local backup, I don't have it running 24-7 because all it does is occasionally receive data from a replication task from the other NAS. And so if it's not doing that, it's pretty much just sitting there creating more heat. So I currently just keep that NAS off unless I'm running a replication task, which I do just every few days or so. And eventually once I switch those two systems, there's a good chance I might do the same with the old one and try to even set it up on a power schedule. So it's, you know, maybe comes on like once a day just to run a quick replication task get synced up and then shut it back down just so it's not drawing more power and generating more heat for no real good reason now the last thing i have is this synology nas which like i said at this point is pretty much just running my security cameras so i can hop over into surveillance station and you know see this camera here for example which is my front door and I think that's pretty much it. I do have some future plans, for example, getting rid of that Mac Mini. I just have a few services that I still haven't migrated over. Part of the problem is there's actually like a couple of Slack bots that are still running for my old work that I need to get with them and find a way to migrate them over to like their servers. So I've just been lazy and haven't gotten around to it. And uh, it doesn't matter. I will eventually get rid of that Mac Mini. And then I'm actually hoping to get rid of that Synology NAS. I have some plans here soon to try out Blue Iris and see if that's a good alternative that will work for me as well as my wife and such. And if it does, that will probably mean the end for my good old Synology NAS. I've also had the idea of, instead of running Proxmox on that little mini PC, running it on what would be my backup NAS. That way that machine could handle all of those services as well as my local backup. And yeah, true NAS would be virtualized, which I know some people are definitely not a fan of, but it would only be virtualized for my backup. So not quite as big of a deal, I think. And that way, basically all of my storage and services would be just down to two machines. And then everything else would just be networking. I'd also love to try out more software, so if you guys have any ideas of things you'd like me to try out, make sure and put it in the comments below. Who knows, I may even make a video of just trying out ideas that you guys have. I know this video wasn't a lot, and I know I'm not running anything really crazy and really cool, but it works for me, and I thought it would be fun to share it with you guys. Like I said, if you have any recommendations, put them down in the comments below, but otherwise, I think that's about it for this one. So, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, stay curious, and I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you.